Greetings Diocese Olympia and everyone who's watching. I've been asked to offer a few reflections on my recent four month sabbatical just completed. You never know when you embark on a sabbatical how the days are actually going to go, but life is no different and I'm reminded of that every time I do this. All in all, this sabbatical did go as planned. In fact, I don't think there was one plan that did not come to fruition in some way. If I could point to anything, I might have said that went awry, it would be too little downtime, too few in between times. In all my planning, I didn't plan that. And that says a lot about me. Always busy is my way, no slack time, or what if we were true to ourselves, we would say a waste of time. Unfortunately, I have a deep sense in my soul about that. So this sabbatical really did reveal that to me again. And I'm hoping now to give that downtime, that in-between time, the same priority as always being in motion, which I know for sure is not always a virtue. As I've said in several venues, a sabbatical or any journey has all that you have planned, but most assuredly has the addition of the many things you could have never planned. Some you would have never planned or wished for, and some you could not imagine. And all of those get thrown in there too. As is so often the case in life, those added in unplanned, unimagined moments might well have been some of the best. One thing that was so at the surface for me during this four months, especially among those things we did that were historical and learning opportunities regarding past events was how little we really knew, how uninformed I was it has taught me to investigate more, learn more, listen more. Of course, there was joy all along the way, mostly in people we met, but also in just being with my wife and seeing this beautiful world we were blessed to live in. So what did go as planned? Minidoka was the first. For years, I'd wanted to go on this pilgrimage to one of the Japanese concentration camps of our country, Minidoka in Idaho, where so many of the families of Japanese descent from our diocese have personal connections, many having lived there. We finally got to do that. We were reminded again just how easy it is to disregard, bully, oppress the other. How supposed safety can get in the way of reality and compassion. It was a lesson in what can happen when the tide takes over and voices of reason are unwilling to speak up. The time there was profound and moving. And then the Camino. My wife and I did do that in mid-July. The weather was beautiful, the people were more beautiful, and the time was everything and more that I had hoped for. We walked about 75 miles over six days, just enough to get our Compostela. We also got to stay in Spain and see some of it, Madrid and Barcelona. I'd always wanted to see Gaudí's buildings in Barcelona, but especially the Sacra de Familia the cathedral he spent his life attempting to complete and which to this day is not completed. I was not disappointed in that at all. We took our usual vacation in Florida and left directly from there to fly to Poland for the pilgrimage to the death camps of Poland and the Third Reich. This is one of the most powerful and most profound times we had on this sabbatical. This especially was a place where I had the immense feeling of just how little I understand about this whole ugly part of our world history. I see even more how it's very connected to what is happening today and how careful and discerning we have to be to make sure such things never occur again. I've had so many of you say to me, I wish it, I could go there. If you ever go back, let me know. And so, I want to tell you, I do intend to go back to lead a trip, pretty much the same trip, to Poland in the summer of 2021. So if you're interested, let me know. Rabbi Pupko has agreed to lead it again, and I can tell you just the days of being with him will be worth the entire price. After Poland, and what amounted to about 26 days away from home, we came home for a short time before several smaller trips occurred. American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese, the Jerusalem Board meeting in New York City, which I sit on, the Church Pension Fund Board meeting there, a brief time at the House of Bishops meeting in Minneapolis, and then on to Austin City Limits Music Festival and the Meeting of the Minds Music Festival in Key West. You can read about all this in my blog, bishoprickle.com. Go there for the fresh, as it was happening, reflections. I guess I would end this with those unplanned events. In the course of these four months, I had an aunt and an uncle die. I presided at my aunt's funeral in LA. 
another journey so many of you have been on too was being the power of attorney for another aunt who had a stroke just before sabbatical all started. Since she's in Omaha, this has been a trying time attempting to get all of the things that had to be settled, settled from so far away. One of the amazing things about all of that were the traveling companions along the way that helped me with all of this. They are literal saints I had never met or gotten to know, and I got to know them more in that whole trying time. That totally restored my faith in the goodness, mercy, and grace of my fellow humans. So many went above and beyond to help us during that time. And then I finally got to go see my aunt in not the first place she landed to live, but the second, a whole other story in and of itself. But to see her happy and doing well might have been the best gift of this sabbatical. And in the most surprising moments, that trip took me back to where I started, where I was born. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska in 1963. The first house we lived in was literally built by my grandfather. It still stands and in fact looks about as good as it did when he built it. One of the best houses in the neighborhood. I got to see the house my mother grew up in, visited the graves of my great and great great grandfather and grandmothers, which I had never seen once in my life. At age 56, it was a true circle I had not intended, did not plan, and could not be more grateful for. There are sure to be many more reflections. There will certainly be many sermons from this time, many more than you may want to hear. And I cannot yet sum it up, even if that was possible. But what I will say is how important these times are. I highly recommend and encourage all clergy to avail yourselves of the blessing, and quite frankly, anyone else who can. I know it's not a common possibility in most occupations that it's not lost on me, but I do think, done correctly, sabbaticals teach us so much, change us, make us better, and I think I'm changed, thank to this time. It was a huge blessing. I don't take the gift for granted or lightly. I thank all of you for allowing me to do it, and I look forward to sharing even more with you about it as it becomes ever clearer to me and as I myself continue to have revelations from it. i leave you with a favorite quote of mine while on this pilgrimage. A tourist has been there. A pilgrim has changed there. Blessings to all of you. And Buen Camino.